Well, I'm honored to be able to speak about Dialog, which is a software product among all of these hardware specialists that we've heard from earlier today. But what I'd like to start with is to take you back to 1980, 1980, 85, in the 80s, and have you recall how you accessed information in those days. If you had a curiosity, where did you go to find an answer? Well, many times you simply gave up. Other times you could go to the library and access some very large books and maybe find subjects uh, oriented by subject matter, but it was very hard to do specific searching in those days. Okay, in the early, let's see, did I say 80s? I really meant, I really meant, I really meant 50s. I really meant 1950. <laughs> I got behind myself. Um, so let's let's uh, now we'll move up into the beginning of the 60s, and there uh, were computers around in those days. They were second generation computers. We called them batch computers because there was no human interaction to speak of. It was all tape in, tape out, and printer output. Uh, and there were search systems going at that time that were batch systems, but they were very awkward because you punched up your search on punch cards. It was batched along with a number of other search and, th and then ran against a tape containing the documents that were involved uh, that might be of interest to you. Uh, I ran into that kind of thing. Uh, in uh, in the early in the late 80s in school at Stanford, when we were looking at information retrieval processes, we had meetings, industry meetings, and meetings with IBM. I met an H. Peter Lund, who was an IBM visionary, who invented the quick index keyword in context index that allowed you then to rotate titles of documents and be able to search on the title of a document or title words in the document. But uh, that was still very cumbersome. So uh, when the third generation technology came along, that is the 360, IBM 360 technology, I saw the chance that we could leapfrog all over the batch search systems because of the what that technology provided, which was telecommunications, mass random access storage, and human, inact human interactivity via terminal systems. Uh, I made a proposal to Lockheed Management to set up something called the Information Sciences Laboratory, which we did in uh, uh, in Stanford Industrial Park, and we got one of the very early IBM 360 machines in, let's see, it was announced in 64, we got it in 65 and set it up in the lab, and I started work on information retrieval. Now, I visualized information retrieval as a process, not a probe. And when you search today, it's usually a probe. You get your output, you reformulate your search, you go back in. With a process, I visualized the database as an information space so that when you did a search, you built a subset of that space, but you might want to use that subset later. So we saved the subsets and allowed people to intersect uh, intersect subsequent sets with prior sets in order to refer, refine a search or to elaborate on that search. Uh, we were lucky enough to win a NASA contract in 1967, which led to our business. And the business, we went commercial in 1972. We established a network for SRO in Europe, the first information retrieval network in Europe, and went on from there. And that kind of activity is what resulted in the 
milestone that I worked with Brian on. Thank you, Brian.